Hi YouTube, I am Lamar Townsend. If you're new to my channel, I'm a psychic and energy channeler, a tarot reader, and an astrologer. And if you would like a personal reading from me, definitely check out my website, lamartownsendtarot.com. I am available for readings, and I would love to read for you. This is my website, so once you've reached this page, you know you're on the right page. Definitely go down there and follow me on Twitch. Check out my YouTube, my Patreon, become a member. And check out my Spotify, my podcast. Follow me as well on Instagram. But if you would like a personal reading, go directly just to the store section of my website to view all the different rates, services, and products that I offer. As you can see here, I do all different types of readings and uh, I al do also make all different types of products. I do birth chart readings, I do mediumship readings, birth chart readings if you want to know about your sun, moon, and rising and things of that nature. Mediumship readings are good if you want to connect to your ancestors and spirit guides, those who have passed over, if you want to see if they have any messages for you. Past life readings are good if you want to connect to your past lives. We all have past lives. We are soul beings living a human experience. All right, so that means our soul may be older than our bodies, all right, and they, it often is. I also do all different types of psychic tarot readings to accommodate your needs. I do email psychic tarot readings if you're someone that likes to read back. I also do send you the tarot spreads, uh, pictures of them. I also do video recorded psychic tarot readings if you're someone that likes to listen and watch. So I record myself doing the reading um, after you've sent your questions and made your payment. And then I um, send you the download link for the video for your reading uh, for you to download and keep forever and then if, if you like more of a personal touch which many of you do I also do phone readings as well all right I do sell candles or I do candles as well if you would like some spiritual protection or some good luck energy going on with your finances or love I also do make scarves and face masks and actually in this video you're gonna see me sew. all right and I also do sell African black soap, which is a really good soap for those who suffer from eczema. It's also good for hair. I don't know if you can hear my cat, but he has the zoomies right now. And things of that nature. So I would definitely also check out that if you would be interested in those things. Once again, my website is lamartownsandtarot.com. So like I was saying yesterday, I um, did a video where I was talking about the importance <coughs> of... Protecting your hair and keeping your hair protected with some sort of either scarf, bonnet. This is the scarf I've been wearing. This was the exact same scarf I was wearing in the video. But I was also telling you guys the, the spiritual importance of it and how your hair can attract envy and negative energy from people just as much as it, it can attract good energy. Um, and I showed you guys briefly how to prepare your scarves, your bonnets to also not only protect your hair spiritually but like... Protect it in terms of nourishment and help it to grow. You know, like I'm someone that's all about DIY, but like all purpose as well. Like if we're going to go all out, let's go all out. So I'm going to go all out here and show you guys. This is a scarf that I made for myself, for myself, from fabric I bought from Joint Fabrics. Now, in the video I did uh, yesterday, I was telling you guys about the Fulani silk method, silk wrap method. The Fulani people are from West Africa, and it's um, said that what they do is they actually they take their silk scarves and they coat them in oils in certain products to help nourish their hair. All right, to help keep those mo that moisture locked in as they wear their scarves throughout the day or as they wear them to bed. Which, if you don't wear a scarf or a bonnet or anything to bed, I definitely would recommend it. You will experience way less breakage, way less dry hair, unless you sleep on sleep on satin sheets or something like that. But it's just good to also protect your hair from the elements. Well, in this video, I said this is a scarf that I made myself. I sewed it myself. It looks like a scarf. Maybe you know you would find that. Maybe some store, maybe some, you know, boat boutique, maybe perhaps. I've also coated this in oils. So I said that I would go to the fabric store and get fabric and show you guys the process from scratch. And that's what I'm going to do in this video. So I went to the fabric store today and I bought some really, I love the color purple. Which is also a movie that I love. So I got purple fabric. Isn't this so pretty? And this is going to be the side that I wrap my hair with, and this is going to be the outside. But just like this, I'm assuming right now they kind of look different colors. And you can kind of, it, it kind of looks like they're different colors. I mean, one side is clearly shiny. Another side is, you know, maybe not as shiny, but it kind of has like a solid form to it more. 
um, after I coated it in oil. So I'm going to see how the color of this fabric re reacts to the oils and products I put on it. But we're going to get into the process of making your own silk scarf or satin scarf. This is satin. I believe this is 97 or 90 percent polyester, which is also waterproof and um, 7 percent or 30 seven or three percent spandex so it gives a little which i like in my scarves so um really what i'm gonna do is i got it cut the exact way i want it the exact size i want it um however the the edges are a little bit frayed they're fraying a little bit so what i'm gonna do is i'm just gonna sew the edges up really quickly um and then we're going to get into the process of treating the actual scarf with oils um one thing i've actually been thinking about is selling these because you guys saw that i do sell scarves on my website so if you guys would be interested in buying these if you wrap your hair if you you know want to wear this as a style the kind of thing um and if you also want to nourish and protect your hair let me know i definitely would be open to shipping them out um specifically in the united states um because that's where i'm from but maybe canada as well i'm not sure it would all be on my website worked out on my website but let me know if you guys would be interested in these um because i would i actually love making these they're really fun and i love how they protect and nourish your hair speaking of which i was wearing this earlier today along with another silk bonnet and let me show you guys how my hair looks. I put no product in my hair. I've gone no product with my hair for three days now, three or four days now. Um, literally, the, the the satin scarf or the silk scarf does all the work for you once you've coated it in all the oil. So. And I get to show you guys how I make them. So if you do, like, if you would be interested in buying them, like, you see the process. So let me, got, let me show you guys my hair. My hair is straightened. I am a straightened natural. That means I don't have a perm, I don't have a um, relax or anything like that. This is just my natural hair, uh, blow dried out and straightened. Uh, but it's been blow, dry blow dried out and straightened technically for about a month. But every now and then I would have to tr treat my hair. But, um, or like, you know, like re, you know, redo it, but I haven't had to do that since I've been wrapping my hair, but it's been in this state, I would say for about a week, basically, like this is a week where at least a couple days where I've not touched it with any heat at all. Um, and really the only products I use are silk infusion, which we're going to use on the scarf and oils. All right. Natural oils. So this is my hair. Once again, it's been three days with no product in my hair very silky it feels very silky very nourish I brushed it out this morning so it's brushed all right so these are the benefits of wearing these scarves I have it wrapped I have my edges wrapped here one because my edges are not um straight they're like in my natural curly stage as you can see here a little bit so i uh, don't want it to uh, you know look a hot mess i don't want to be on here looking a hot mess with my edges you know needing to have a hot comb run through them i also just kind of want to leave my edges alone like i'm someone that like i just kind of want to grow my edges I don't really have issues with my edges, but I'm just someone that's like very like, like I like I'm someone that cares about my edges. So I kind of baby my edges. Um, although I think maybe there's been a little bit of breakage cause I am coming off of having dreads for so many years. So I kind of like see, I'm, I'm seeing like growth in my edges. So I really want to leave my edges alone. And this is also really, really good for, um, growing your edges back and stuff like that. If you have issues with that, but so far my edges have been treating me really well. So I've been treating them well, although they needed hot comb run through them. I know. All right, you guys, let's get into the process. We're going to go ahead and sew this up and then get into the oil treatment, the product treatment, and we're going to wrap my hair um, at the end of the video.
Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and prepare the fabric so that I can get an even cut or an even sew. I'm actually going to get more in the middle. I mean, I'm just going to feed the fabric through. I'm not going to like push it or, any or anything. And I'm doing more of a stretch sew to ensure I really get a good stitch. So let's go ahead and get into it. Let's do a back stitch. All right, cool. Let's so not make this too long of a process. <laughs> and remember, we're just sewing the edges because we want it to be a uniform. We want it to look good, even though we want it to have function. We want to look good at the same time. And these fabrics are not that expensive, so you can do this up at home on your own as well. I learned um, how to sew. I learned how to sew. Oh my God, the microphone. I learned how to sew. Um, I learned how to sew in middle school, and I think, I don't know, for me, oh god, I need to get scissors, hold on. Like I said, some of the fabric's fraying a little bit. For me, when I learned how to sew, I, I literally never forgot. I learned in middle school the last time I picked up a sewing machine after that was maybe five years later, and... You know, I just picked up sewing back again during uh, quarantine. So, the frayed parts, you want to make sure you tuck those in. Because you don't want those to show. So, either tuck them in or just cut them off. Ooh, I cut a little bit of the fabric thing. Oops, it's okay, we can... Fold it in a bit more, that's okay. That is perfectly okay. Sometimes it happens, let's get into it. I do wanna make sure the whole part stays covered though, so let me really get a good I think sewing is also really relaxing, you know? I love it. It's fun making your own stuff, making your own projects. So I don't know if I'm going to show you guys this whole process. Oh my god, there's so many frayed ends. I'm trying to tuck them in as much as I can so I don't have to keep cutting. Because you guys get the gist of it. And also, I don't want my camera to die. For those of you wondering what I'm watching on my phone, I'm watching right now. There's a on YouTube. There's a 24-hour live stream of RuPaul's Drag Race. So I'm just watching that. The machine I'm using is the Singer Heavy Duty. I think it's a 4452 model. By the way, for those of you who would be interested in this machine, once again, I got it during quarantine, so it may have been cheaper then. I don't know how much it would be now. It was also hard to find a sewing machine during quarantine because I guess so many people were sewing at home. We were in lockdown, so it makes sense, right? best time to pick up a sewing machine and learn how to sew or you know pick up a hobby again
Now this is a little long as well on the longer end. I like that because I know my hair is going to grow long. My hair grows fast. So I don't mind that it's on the longer end. So be mindful of size. This is about a... Almost a yard. But it also ensures that you keep it for a long time. Like... You know? I don't know. I like long scarves. I think they're like more fashionable. Okay, cool. Just making sure the seam is good. I'm trying to tuck it in. That's one thing with sewing satin is it can be kind of tricky. Like, it's because it's so slippery. But we're not even like, oh my god, we still have so much to go. I'm just going so slow because I want to really make sure I get these tucked in ends. Usually I'm like speeding through it though, <laughs> but I want this to be like perfect. Alright, let's try and go a little faster. I'm gonna do this one side with you all and then I'll do the rest of it off camera. And then we'll get into the next part. How's that? Cause that'll also save some camera battery. But you wanna make sure you tuck in these frayed ends because you don't want it to like come apart, you know, when you're sleeping or something like that, so. I'd be working this machine overtime, y'all. The interesting thing, thing is RuPaul's Drag Race is a drag show, and a lot of the drag queens on this show sew their own stuff. Maybe that's what, because I love this show, maybe that's what inspired me to get back into sewing, I don't know. Some of them don't, though. If I were on the show, obviously I would... I don't know if I would be sewing all my own stuff. Maybe I would, actually. That'd be a good challenge, sewing all your own stuff. I don't know, I just think sewing's fun in general. It's fun to make your own stuff, like I said. Alright, we're getting like almost there, we're almost there, we're almost done sewing this part, this end here, these edges. We have this much more fabric to go, so we're almost done. I'll show you guys what it looks like at the end. See, it doesn't take that long, honestly. Like, once you know what you're doing... the last bit the last trimmings let's get this home run the end yeah baby oh look at that fray right there that's horrible alright no another fray 
Another thing with sewing up the ends like this is you don't have to worry about fraying. Once you sew up the ends, it's like silky smooth. There's no fraying anymore. So learning how to sew, this is actually a good point. Learning how to sew is not just about, you know, d learning to make your own stuff. Learning how to sew is learning to even alter your own stuff. Like learning how to sew has so many benefits. I don't know necessarily how to sew my own clothes yet. It's something I still want to learn and I have on my bucket list to, to do soon. But just knowing how to sew and like gives me the ability to create stuff like this, like, you know, face masks, like I, sewing is a really great hobby that I really enjoy. So we're at the end here. I love this sewing machine too, it's so good. Oops, there's a fray there, I see it. It's a little fray there. I kind of wish I had caught it earlier, but it's okay. Sometimes you just got to work with what you got. If it bothers me, I'll cut, cut the rest. Maybe they're not too long or good. We're at the end! Yeah! How long did that take you guys? About, what, 10 minutes? I wasn't counting, honestly. So we're at the edge, so we're gonna go ahead and do a back stitch to really secure the um, seam. So we're gonna cut the ends. We're gonna cut the ends up here. All right. All right, so let me show you guys what the edge looks like now. This is what the edge looks like on this side. Much, much more professional, much more scarf-like, right? So this is gonna be great to tie around. So I'm gonna do the other edges off camera and then I'll get back to you guys in a second, all right? All right, so I have finished the scarf. All of the ends are sewn, as you can see. So now we are going to get into the actual oiling of the scarf and preparing it for optimal hair growth. Let's get into it. All right, so we've got the scarf laid out. These are the oils I'm gonna be using in the products. I'm gonna be using some chilk, some chai silk infusion. This is a um, heat protectant. It also does help to keep your hair, hair silky. So I'm gonna especially put this on the edges. This is the shiny side. Um, and then I have some safflower oil that I got from the organic grocery store. Safflower oil is good for hair. It is all natural oil as well. Um, it also has a high heat point. It is, I believe, a polysaturated fat, or it's one of the fats that coats the hair and doesn't necessarily penetrate. Um, allegedly, this is all for... Allegedly... Sorry, I just realized the microphone is over here. Don't even know if you could hear me. I'm going to repeat everything I said. I just realized the microphone. So this is chai silk infusion once again. This is good for heat protectant. It's also good for keeping your hair, hair silky and moisturized. There's some good oils in here. This is safflower, safflower oil, which we're gonna use to mostly coat the scarf. Um, and this I got from the organic grocery store. This is really good for your hair. It has no smell. Um, it is also hypoallergenic or it does keep your hair clean so it doesn't clog your pores. It's one of the oils or fats that coat the hair rather than penetrate the hair in the scalp. So it helps keep your hair shafts um, more flowy and there's less friction. So we're just going to go ahead and get right into it. Um, I'm going to um, start by taking the chai silk infusion. And I'm going to go around the edges of the, I'm going to pour this around the edges here like so. 
because this is what's going to protect your edges. Or in this case, this is what's going to protect my edges. Because you want to make sure you get all of the product, all of the oil to the edges. Now that we've done the, that, now we're just going to evenly distribute. And you don't want to put too much. I mean, you want to put enough to coat it. All right. And don't be afraid of, you know, coating it because it's going to get evenly coated in the end. So then we just literally take the oil and we coat it in oil just like this. All right, can you see it? And then we fold it and you see how the oil is starting to already seep to the other side. Then we really mix up the ingredients here and it's going to get really oily. That's okay. That's kind of what we want. We want it to be evenly coated. It's going to also change a darker color. Um, this actually ended up being more oily than I wanted it to be, but that's okay. What we can do is take some of the oil off by <clears throat> getting a napkin or taking another scarf that I have already and then re-oiling this scarf. So I can just do this. So if you have any like other scarves, you can just spread the that scarf around in the oil if you get if you get it too oily. That way you're not wasting product cuz I don't know. I'm I'm one that doesn't like to waste product, all right? This chai so confusion is not cheap. All right. And see how it turns a uniform color? You can't really tell now which side's shiny. You can if you're close up, so you don't have to worry about that. But, and then this gets an even coating of oil now. So you get, end up re-oiling this one. All right, so that's good. And now we have maybe a little bit of an overly oiled, but um, an oiled scarf. All right, and one thing with the oil is it kind of will dry out. The fabric will soak up the oil as time goes on so that's one thing as well that you don't have to worry about is um over time the the product will settle all right all right so now we've got the scarf ready and oiled and now we're going to wrap it All right, so I got a bit more of the oil off of it. So here we have, once again, the final product. As you can see, it's very shiny still. A bit oily, but the oil will go away eventually. All right. Um, the ends are well coated as well. And what I love is that, you know, if you feel the product, it feels oily, but you wouldn't be able to initially tell. Well, you can kind of tell now, but I mean, over time, you're not going to be able to tell that it's coated in oil because the oil will settle. So I'm going to wrap my hair now. Oh wait, I did it backwards. This is the, you know, too much oil on my forehead, a little bit. Oh wait, no, that's a lot of oil on my forehead. I'm just kidding. Dang, that's a lot. It's okay. The good thing about safflower oil is it is hypoallergenic or non, it doesn't clog your pores. So I don't mind it. I actually use it to moisturize my face as well as my um, hair.
sorry. Try this again. Shiny side first. Because the shiny side has less friction on it. And the good thing about this is if you do use an oil like safflower oil, you also get the benefit of your skin getting moisturized overnight or throughout the day as well. Which means less issues with skin. And things of that nature as well. Oh, this thing does not want to tie right now correctly. Alright, let's try that again. What I find most of the time when I do with this is I actually want to tie it like this. Maybe that's what I'm doing wrong. Yeah. Uh -huh. There we go. Ugh. Okay, there we go. That's how I want it. Perfect. Look at that. Isn't that great? We made this so easily. Wow. So now my hair is protected. I'm going to wear this to the gym. Well, I'm going to wear this on the way to the gym and take it off. When I get out of the gym, or, or to, before I go in the gym and take it off when I get out. But now I have two of these, you guys. And I'm happy this one was able to get re-oiled. Re so sometimes, you don't have to re-oil them as often. Um, I've only ha I'm had this for a couple of days, but it, it's good to re-oil them every now and then. This will soak up. All this oil over time, I promise you, by tomorrow it'll probably be, probably be more dried out. Um, give it time to dry as well, because you don't want the oil to like get on your bed and stuff like that. But I'll unwrap my hair and show you guys how it looks again. See, no friction at all. Even with taking it off, you know, sometimes you take off a scarf and you feel the, you can see the friction in your hair. All right, you guys make scarves protect your hair all right you can also infuse the oil that you put in it in that you put on it with like um essential oils if you would like or spiritual oils like i have some oils that are like i have some good luck oils around here and love oils around here that smell good and also have spiritual purposes so infuse your oils with certain spiritual er or oils and stuff like that to also make them more potent in terms of protection in terms of attracting anything you want to attract or just growing your hair long all right have fun with this okay and if you guys would really be interested in purchasing these or you know making them on your own let me know i would love to know your journey if you would be interested in buying them all right, all right, you guys, I'm going to go get ready for the rest of my nights. I'm going to go to the gym, and then I have a lot of personal readings to get to. But this was a little fun exercise in protecting your hair. So let's do one more wrap. And then I'm wrapping up this episode of Lamar Townsend Tarot. Right? And you can wrap your hair however you want to wrap it. But I'm wrapping mine just like this for the rest of the night. Alright you guys, peace out, love and light. Love, peace, and Afro grease. Wrap up your hair, protect your crown chakra. Alright, your head, your head is your crown chakra. And that is where you receive divine messages from spirit from god from your ancestors okay from you know the spiritual realm the chakras are so important but the crown chakra is 
one of the the very tip top chakra all right and the lowest chakra is your root chakra all right so protect your chakras protect your crown chakra protect your hair protect your head and nourish it help it to grow by protecting it all right you guys love and light until the next one